I once had a superintendent tell me the school business would be far more enjoyable if it was just kids. It's the adults that mess everything up. I'd have to concur. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. School safety is a huge concern in today's world. Since Columbine, more effort, more money, meetings, more new policies than ever before have been adopted to try and keep students and staff safe. School administrators are tasked with school safety. It's a very serious responsibility. Many administrators have participated in active shooter trainings designed to prepare for the worst case scenarios. In some areas, school administrators have been trained and certified to carry a weapon at school. Many schools have school resource officers or SROs, which are local law enforcement officers armed and in uniform assigned to their campuses, all to keep the school safe. It's very important and it's very serious. One of the necessary components of campus safety is safety drills. In the past few decades, the number of drills has increased. Fire drills have always been a staple, but lockdown drills or drills for active shooter scenarios have been implemented in the past few decades in schools throughout the country. At most schools, the drill is everyone hunker down and wait for the cavalry to come. Classroom teachers are supposed to lock the doors, barricade them, hide from sight, and turn off the lights, and most difficult of all, try to keep the students quiet. The drill's over after a few minutes when the all clear is sounded. It usually has the effect of scaring the dickens out of the younger students and creating disciplinary situations with the older ones. Teachers universally hate all safety drills and loathe the interruptions. There are several other safety drills schools are expected to practice depending on the part of the country. Tornado drills in the Midwest is a good example. One of the other less focused on drills is something referred to as shelter or shelter in place drill. This drill was designed to practice for a scenario when something outside the building was a potential hazard. Essentially, you bring everyone inside, the school locked all the outside doors, and then you carry on normally. Under no circumstances was anyone supposed to change classes because that usually meant going outside to another adjoining building. The only time I ever remember using this was when several skunks were spotted on the grounds and animal control was called to remove them. This had the students stalled in the same class for about 90 minutes, but it was no big deal. Now for today's story. I was contacted by one of the school resource officers, or SROs. He excitedly told me that it would be necessary to immediately bring everyone indoors and keep them there. An armed robbery and subsequent chase had concluded in our community. Law enforcement of every stripe was encircling the area in and around the school searching for the criminals. For obvious reasons, a couple of thousand high school students wandering around in the middle of this activity was a bad idea. Over the loudspeaker, we announced the school would shelter in place until the local police decided it was safe to go back to a regular schedule. I knew this was likely to be an unpleasant ordeal. We instructed the teachers to keep the students in their classes and lock the doors, but otherwise, it was business as usual. By clearing the hallways, the SROs and administrators were better able to monitor activity. After about two hours with no movement, it was getting pretty boring. Be careful what you wish for. My radio cracked. A bus driver in the maintenance building on the other side of the campus had spotted someone lurking around the building. He said he saw the person sneak around to the back of the building and then disappear out of sight. He explained from his vantage point he was not able to see anything on the back side of the building. When I saw the SROs, they were sprinting to the exit near the rear of the building. Sheriff's deputies and other law enforcement had already been contacted and were all descending on the area. The radio report had the same effect on local law enforcement as a picnic basket would have on the local ant population. It was difficult not to notice one of my SROs had an AR. Where did that come from? We put the school in lockdown. From a safe distance, I saw the SRO throw the back door open and carefully look outside. From the other direction, a small horde of uniforms approached. The area was empty. The letdown was palatable. The SRO looked at me. I just shrugged. We immediately checked our security cameras. Our security cameras outdoors were limited. Well, that's being generous. They weren't very good at all. They were terrible. Sure enough, as we watched the monitor, a person entered from between some cars and headed to the back of the building. The image was horrible. The person had a dark coat or hoodie and appeared to be carrying something bulky in their arms. There were many blind spots in the coverage. As we played back the video, the person moved out of view but never showed up again on any other video feed. 
It was like they vanished. The SRO and I tried to figure out what happened, but were completely buffaloed. The other law enforcement officers were still searching around the building. My SRO was wound up tighter than a watch spring. The video was lousy. I asked the SRO if he could tell what the person was carrying. He said he didn't know. It could be anything. A bomb, some books, a briefcase. A bomb? Whatever it was, the person was carrying it out in front of them and was very careful with it. He suggested we go around to the classroom near where the person disappeared. Maybe someone saw or heard something. I had my doubts about this plan because the windows in the building are six feet off the ground. They let in light but block most of the other distractions from the outside. We approached the room carefully. Since we were still in lockdown, the noise coming from the classroom was very disturbing. Holy crap, is there a criminal in one of my classrooms? One full of students? My heart begins to thump hard against my chest. I look over at the SRO and I can tell he is thinking the same thing. Except he has an AR. The SRO used his key to unlock the door and then flew into the classroom. What I saw when I peered in the open door was almost unbelievable. The class was having... A pizza party. There were at least four pizza boxes open and partially eaten. Most of the students and the teacher were moving about enjoying a slice of pizza. The SRO said something out loud I cannot repeat. The room freezes. That's the appropriate response when an amped up policeman carrying a rifle sprints into your classroom. All at once, it was obvious to me. And it was confirmed the next day during an after action safety review. I am all at once relieved, but I am really pissed at the same time. The next day during the meeting, we learned the teacher allowed one of the students to climb out of the window, get in his car, and fetch pizzas for the class. The bus driver saw him as he returned. He disappeared from the video feed because he climbed back through the window after delivering the pizzas. The room's window was in a blind spot. Over and over in my mind while we were having that meeting, I kept asking myself, what other poor choices is this teacher making? Check that. I probably don't want to know. You can't make this stuff up.